When cruise lines advertise their cruises, chances are they'll show you the most exciting and the newest cruise ships. The majority of cruise ships owned by mainstream cruise lines though are older than 10 years and many of them are over 20 years old. I recently took a cruise on a brand new mega ship. Her name is Iona and she is huge. She's over four times the size of the Titanic and holds over 5,000 guests. What I wanted to know after disembarking Iona was did I enjoy that cruise because I really enjoyed the cruise line or did I enjoy it because it was such a new and exciting cruise ship? I didn't know if I was to cruise on a smaller and older ship with the same cruise line if I would enjoy it in the same way or if I would feel ripped off because the smaller ship didn't have everything that this new large ship did. To find out how the ships compared, I booked a cruise on P&O's Ventura. P&O's Ventura was built in 2007 and she is just over half the size of Iona in terms of gross tonnage. There were actually differences between the two in ways that I had never considered, such as the way that the formal night dress codes were enforced, but more about that later. I did have visions of the ship kind of falling apart. I have been on cruise ships of a similar age where you would find buckets in the corridor to collect leaks. Things would be frayed, things would be broken. I have found that it's a lot more about how the cruise line has looked after the ship rather than its age, but I didn't know how well P&O had looked after Ventura. I had heard that the cabins on Ventura, to put it nicely, were a little bit dated, and I wasn't sure if I'd enjoy the cruise as much with less choice of restaurants and entertainment. When I boarded P&O's newest cruise ship, Iona, there was an immediate wow factor. We walked straight into the middle of this atrium, which is split over two levels, and it very much felt like a fancy hotel. You could tell that everything on board was brand new. I was worried that walking onto Ventura wouldn't have the same kind of wow factor as Iona, and it did have a wow factor in its own way, but if you have a look here side by side Iona and Ventura, you can definitely see the differences. The design of the atrium on P&O's Ventura is a very classic cruise ship design with these glass elevators and seating on different levels. You'll find this design of atrium on quite a few of the Princess cruise ships as well as the P&O ships. To find out which cruise ship would suit you best, Iona or Ventura, I'm going to ask you six questions during this video and the first of which is which atrium do you prefer? I feel as though it's the wood and the colours that give away the age of Ventura. We never found things that were broken or scuffed, but some of the pieces, you look at the design and you think, yeah, that is late 2000s, especially things like this tree in the glass house. Nothing wrong with it. It's quirky. I quite like it, but it does date the ship. One of my favourite things about cruising on P&O's Iona was the inside cabin that we had. It was very bright. It was very light. It was very airy. There was lots of storage. There was a shower screen, not a shower curtain. I know some of you guys really don't like the curtains. I knew that my cabin on Ventura wouldn't be like the cabin on Iona. The cabins are one area of cruise ships that I feel really do date them. I suppose it's not easy for a cruise line to just update 1,500 cabins, so they do tend to get stuck in the design that they were built in. My main priorities when I stay in a cruise ship cabin is, is it clean? Is there enough storage? And am I going to have a good sleep here? And I'm happy to report that I had brilliant sleeps on Iona and also lots of brilliant sleeps on Ventura. The design of the cabins on Ventura definitely is a little bit dated and the bathroom was showing signs of age. I'm not sure why, but the shower in the bathroom was set up for somebody who's around my height. If you're five foot six, you're gonna be completely fine, but if you're six foot or taller, you're not gonna fit in Ventura's shower. I'm not sure why. I know people in the olden days were shorter, but I don't think we can count 2007 as being the olden days. Ventura's cabins do have one thing that I prefer though, and that is this separate wardrobe area, which means that you can get changed while somebody else is still asleep. My next question for you is looking at these two cabins, Iona's and Ventura's, which do you prefer? When it comes to cruise ship design, one thing that's quite different between the smaller and the bigger ships is just how many decks of cabins you have. On Ventura, around six and a half of the decks were taken up by passenger cabins, and on Iona, that's around nine and a half decks. That does mean that you have got quite a lot of stairs to walk, that's not a problem for me, but it is something definitely to bear in mind. Beyond the physical differences of the ship, I was concerned that I would find my cruise on Ventura boring after having been on Iona. There were so many options, so many restaurants, so many things you could do on Iona and Ventura just doesn't have some of them. Ventura doesn't have a cinema, it doesn't have a splash park, it does the best with the space that it has but it's not ever going to be a big cruise ship like Iona. Both of the cruise ships had big theatres and there was a lot of live music around the ship. There wasn't a huge difference in what was actually offered, there was just more offered on Iona because there were more venues. 
In addition to the theater space, Iona also has another performance space, which is this amazing dome. It's an inside pool during the day, and at night they would do all kinds of amazing acrobatic shows here. I will say that even though my cruise on Iona and my cruise on Ventura were both at reduced capacity, the cruise on Iona did feel much busier, and sometimes we would have to stand because we couldn't get a seat at certain shows like in this dome. My third question to you is, would you prefer a smaller cruise ship that's quieter and has less choice, or a bigger cruise ship that's quite busy but there's loads of different venues to choose from. When I was on both cruises we had to use P&O Cruises app to book the theatre shows and most of our restaurants. You may find on some cruise lines that they only have the best technology on the newest cruise ships but what happened in 2020 is that cruise lines had a bit of a break and a bit of a chance to update all of their cruise ships. Princess Cruises for example spent 2020 fitting out their Ocean Medallion technology to all of their ships and a lot of cruise lines used that break as a chance to bring up their older ships to the same standards as the newer ships in terms of technology. One big benefit of cruising on a smaller cruise ship is that you don't have as far to walk. If you're out somewhere and you want to just pop back to your cabin, it's unlikely that that's going to take you too long. Our cabin was right at one end on Iona and I, I never timed it, but I'm pretty sure if you were at the other end and you wanted to go back to your cabin and back, you would be gone for 10, 15 minutes. It was a long way. It's something that you should think about before you book a cruise. How happy are you to walk long distances? I'm quite happy. Leave me alone and I'll just pot around the deck but I know that's not for everybody. Your Britishism of the week is the word potter. I honestly didn't realise that the rest of the world didn't use this word, but to potter around just means to kind of slowly move around. You're not really moving with any purpose. You're just having a good time. You're pottering around the shops. You're pottering around the ship. Potter, potter, potter. P&O are a very interesting cruise line in the way that they do dress codes and formal nights. On most cruise ships, the cruise line will have a rule and that is the same for all of its ships, but it does vary a bit on P&O cruise ships. When we took our cruise on Iona, we only had one formal night per week and it wasn't really too strict. The dress code only applied to the main dining rooms, as far as I remember. On our Ventura cruise, we were on board for 12 nights. We had three formal nights and the dress code was applied not just to the main dining room, but also also to some of the other lounges and bars on board. I'm actually wearing a sparkly dress while recording this because we have just hit 100,000 subscribers and I wanted to say 100,000 thank yous. I can't do that in this video, but I thought sparkles, sparkles would be nice. So I'm wearing some sparkles. I'm quite firmly on team less formal nights. So in this situation, I much prefer the approach that Iona took, but that is my next question for you. Would you prefer one formal night per week or more than that? One thing I can't compare between the two though is how well the cruise ships handle bad weather. On our Iona cruise, we had no problems with the weather. It was smooth sailing all round, but on our Ventura cruise, it was the roughest weather that I've ever had on a cruise. To find out how we dealt with the storms, the gale force winds, and why I wouldn't do this cruise again, check out this video next.